Next on Worcester News tonight, a community mourning the loss of a beloved teacher, how his students are remembering him. Plus, the Gun Owners Action League makes a request of parents after thousands of students walk out of school. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brittany Schaefer. Today, the Trump administration accused Russia of a hacking operation targeting the country's energy grid. Tonight, we're hearing from an expert who says while it's concerning, people shouldn't be too worried. Our Cam Jandro joins us live now with more. Cam. Yeah, Brittany, Homeland Security says they've been seeing hacks from the Russians for the last two years or so. And a professor here in central Massachusetts says these hacks are just part of today's world. The Trump administration accusing Russia of trying to hack the country's electric grid and other infrastructure. I think you can see uh, from the actions that we've taken up until this point, we're going to be tough on Russia until they decide to change their behavior. Allison McDowell Smith directs the Master of Science in Counterterrorism at Nichols College. She says attacks like this are nothing new. We see nowadays technology and how instrumental it is in our everyday lives. So unfortunately, this is something that we have to be aware of and prepare for potential cyber threats in the future. Thursday, a report from the Department of Homeland Security claimed Russian hackers gained access to numerous control systems in the U.S. McDowell Smith says a cyber hack to the country could be devastating. You're talking about people not having access to water, being able to get to a grocery store, being able to get gas. You, you talk about an entire um, shutdown of our environment. Homeland Security is also reporting there have been numerous Russian cyber attacks since March of 2016. But McDowell Smith says it's not something people should be concerned about. I think it's something that everyone should be conscious of, that it is happening, but it's also something to not stop living your everyday lives. So it's important to know that we do have agencies in place that are working to combat these threats, and most of the time do it successfully, which is excellent. Now, the accusation comes on the same day the United States imposed sanctions on 19 Russians for their alleged involvement in the 2016 election. Brittany. Thank you, Cam. In an effort to raise awareness of gun violence, hundreds of students walked out of school Wednesday as part of a national movement. But now the Gun Owners Action League is asking for videos of what they are calling protests to see if the walkouts are pushing an anti-civil rights agenda. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. In a letter to members, the Northboro-based Gun Owners Action League is asking parents to document what's being said to students and by students during school walkouts. The group is looking for videos to see if there are signs of anti-civil rights or of students being bullied into participating. It's very easy to follow, you know, follow the herd kind of thing. But we want to make sure that teachers and faculty are encouraging kids to look at different points of view. The letter is facing backlash from some politicians. State Senator Jamie Eldridge says asking adults to record students is troubling. To videotape and to express it as an anti-civil rights action, um, I find extremely distressing. Eldridge is concerned the letter was written to intimidate students and students would worry where the videos would go. Is that going to end up on some right-wing website? Am I going to be harassed online? Goals Executive Director Jim Wallace says the group is trying to be non-intrusive. Wallace says they plan to use the videos to see if schools are pushing a political agenda and would notify school administration or the Department of Education if necessary. Our intention was not to use this stuff for, you know, social media bullying. It was actually going to be kept pretty private. Uh, unless we had to share something with the authorities. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. For the past several months, the College of the Holy Cross debated whether or not to change the name of their mascot. The school decided earlier this year to keep the Crusader name, but an announcement sent to students and staff Wednesday by the president says the school will no longer use the night mascot. Reverend Philip Burroughs says in the letter, the mascot inevitably ties us directly to the reality of the religious wars and the violence of the Crusades. He says this imagery stands in contrast to our stated values. Over the coming months, the college will gradually phase out the use of all night-related imagery. 
A longtime teacher at David Prouty High School died unexpectedly Tuesday. 64-year-old Philip DeLongchamp was loved by his students, and tonight many of them are mourning his death and organizing an effort to honor his legacy. Our Gretchen LaRosa has the story. For more than four decades, Philip DeLongchamp devoted himself to teaching. And his work went beyond the classroom with gestures that will forever stand out to his students and colleagues. Uh, Philip DeLongchamp, everybody knew him as Mr. D, and he was just the embodiment of an educator. He was everything you could ask for in a teacher. He went above and beyond for every student that ever came through his classroom. He was just an amazing guy. Words, words can't describe how, what, what a nice guy he really was. When students returned to David Prouty High School Wednesday after a snow day, they learned their most cherished teacher wasn't there. Mr. D died unexpectedly due to a medical problem early Tuesday morning. He didn't want other people to feel bad for him. He wanted to take care of others before others took care of him. And so he wouldn't really express his problems to others and he wouldn't want help from others. The news of his death was not easy for students who say he instilled a passion for learning in each and every one of them. Make sure I wasn't late to school because I wanted to be in homeroom with Mr. D. And he would make me want to pay attention in French class. He'd make me want to work harder and study harder. He really inspired and motivated his students unlike any other teacher. DeLongchamp was an educator in the Spencer East Brookfield Regional School District for most of his career. His students say he did a lot to improve the quality of their education. And they want to remember Mr. D by renaming the Knox Trail Middle School after him. T tomorrow's never promised. Um, appreciate your educators because they really work harder than anybody realizes and they're more impactful on the lives of students than anybody really thinks. So appreciate what they do for you and the role that they have in your lives, your children's lives and society in general. Over 3,700 people have signed a petition to rename this school after Mr. DeLongchamp. Current and former students we spoke with say, while they recognize the contributions of General Knox, Mr. D impacted countless students in his 43 years of teaching, and his legacy deserves to be honored. Gretchen LaRosa, Worcester News Tonight. Thank you, Gretchen. Greater Good Imperial Brewing Company is opening Worcester's largest tap room. The close to 3,000 square foot room will be opening at the end of the month. Thursday, Greater Good held a private opening for those who helped create the new spot. Business manager TJ Ethier says this is the first time the company will be brewing its own beer on site, and he says Worcester is the perfect location. I think it's really cool that uh, we chose Worcester as a spot with 11 colleges in the area. Um, and there's really nothing like that in the city yet. Uh, we've got breweries, but nothing that facilitates a come, stay for a few hours kind of vibe. So it's mo mostly just small, small area, really finger foods, uh, really get rushed, rushed out pretty quickly. So this is big, wide open, about 100 person capacity. The space is equipped with arcade, lawn, and board games and has a kitchen for small bites to eat. Ethier expects the grand opening will be on March 27th. The Worcester Black Jewish Alliance held a movie screening Thursday night to bring together two communities. The Alliance is a partnership between the Jewish Federation and the NAACP. Dozens gathered at Nick's Bar and Restaurant for a viewing of the documentary of Body and Soul. The Jewish Federation of Central Massachusetts's executive director says the movie highlights the collaboration between Jewish and black musicians during the jazz era. You can appreciate music uh, regardless of your background or uh, where you come from and we knew that this would bring a lot of people out and it would be interesting and this documentary in particular highlights the collaboration between the black and Jewish community so it's particularly special for a group like ours to show something like this. To have a full house for something like this is really special. Stephen Schimmel says Worcester has a great appreciation for culture and art and he isn't surprised with the large turnout. It's been two days since the latest nor'easter hit central Massachusetts, and what's left over is piling up. In Northborough, drivers say the large snowbanks are distracting. Our Roslyn Flaherty has more. Victoria Frankel says she has a hard time seeing around large snow mounds while she's driving. You don't know what's behind. Northboro DPW says they are not having any problems finding a place to put all the snow. They are doing what they can to make getting around easier. We're pushing back at the intersections, 
Uh, we've done additional snow blowing uh, the parking lots to improve uh, some access for pedestrians. DPW Director Scott Sharpentier says residents have 24 hours to clear their sidewalks after a snowstorm and says his biggest concern is pedestrian safety. Pedestrians, they can surprise you when they, when they walk out of the sidewalks. Northboro Police asked drivers to approach an intersection with caution even if they have a green light to avoid an accident. With the snow mounds, the roads also would be slick and where you can't see where they might be a pedestrian, always too slow and approach with caution. It's advice drivers seem to be taking, many being more careful while the large snow piles melt. Slow down. Don't be in such a hurry. Take it easy. Look before you pull out. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Fire departments across the state are asking residents to help remove snow around fire hydrants. In Worcester, there are more than 6,000 hydrants, making it almost impossible for firefighters to clear them all without the help of residents. The city's DPW reminding people to clear around three feet around them. They say to remove any snow and ice and clear enough space for the hydrants for firefighters to work. Residents and businesses are also asked to clear a path from the hydrant to the street.